All right, guys, good day to you. And in this video, I want to show you how to graph a quadratic function by hand. Now, I know with technology, we have graphing calculators, you have graphing calculators on your devices, we have Desmos, we have a bunch of other technological ways to graph functions, quadratic functions in particular. But once in a while, you might be asked on a test or on an assignment to graph a quadratic function by hand without using technology. And so I, so I wanna show you a couple things of how to do that. I'm gonna work through two quick examples and um, hope this helps you. So we wanna graph the function f of x equals 2x squared minus 2x minus four. First thing we want to recognize is that the leading coefficient two is positive. We will call that the a value, so a equals two which is greater than zero, that means the graph is gonna open upward. So we know it's gonna look more like a U rather than an N. So once we establish that, the next thing we wanna do is get the axis of symmetry. And if you remember, the formula is X equals the opposite of B over two A, where A is the leading coefficient, that's the positive two in front of the x squared. B is the coefficient of the linear term, so the, the minus two in front of the x. And just so you know, the c value is the minus four, that's the constant. So it's the opposite of B over two times two, which is gonna give you uh, one half. If you cancel the twos, the negatives become positive, so you get one half. So that means that at x equals one half, this is not part of the graph, but I'm gonna put a dashed line there, try to draw it on there. And that's gonna be our axis of symmetry. That just means that if you fold the graph in half, it's gonna be a mirror image of itself over that line. And that's gonna help us in graphing because once we get one point for the graph on one side of that axis of symmetry, we know that the mirror point is gonna be on the other side. So it's kind of like if you get one point, then you can get another point. So the next thing you wanna do is get the vertex. And the vertex is either the maximum or the minimum point. It's the, the top of the N or the bottom of the U on your parabola. And all you do is plug the X value for the axis of symmetry into the function. So we would do F of X or F of one half equals two times one half squared minus two times one half minus four. So one half squared is gonna be one fourth. Uh, two times one half is gonna be one, so it's minus one minus four. And then two times one fourth is gonna give us one half. Uh, minus four minus one is minus five. So you end up with minus 4.5. Okay, so that means that the vertex is the coordinate one half comma negative 4.5. That's right about, let me make it a little bit bigger, right about there. So now what I'm gonna do is erase some work. And we know that that's gonna be the minimum because since our A value is positive, we know that our parabola is gonna open upward. And then the vertex is the bottom point of that upward opening parabola. So the next thing we wanna get is the y-intercept. And your y-intercept is just plugging zero into the function. So two times zero squared minus two times zero minus four. So that would simplify to minus four. That's gonna give you the coordinate zero comma negative four, which would be right here. Now we can use symmetry to get the point on the other side. Since that's a half unit away from the axis of symmetry on the left side, I know that its mirror point is gonna be a half unit away on the right side. So I'm just gonna put it in blue right here. It's gonna be at the same height or at negative four. And then what I always like to do is get one more point on the graph. So what I like to do is go over maybe uh, one unit to the left or to the right and plug that X value in from the 
you know, one point to the left or the right from the points I already have. Since I have a point at positive one, I'm going to go over to positive two. So f of two, you just plug in two. So two times two squared minus two times two minus four. So two times four minus four minus four. And two times four is eight minus, that's going to be minus eight, which is going to be zero. So it would be the point two comma zero, which is right there. And now by symmetry, if I am a half unit and then one more unit over from the axis of symmetry to the right, I can go over a half unit and then one more unit to the left to get my other point. OK, and you can kind of see that the points begin to make a U shape. If you wanted to go over to three and get another point, go ahead. But if you're just sketching the graph, I think these five points will be sufficient. But here's what you want to do. You don't want to connect them in a V. You want to connect them in a smooth curve. So our curve, just curve your curve to go through the points there. I like to put arrows on the end of my parabola. OK, all right, let's do one more. OK, so in this example, we want to graph the function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 4. Now, we always start off by finding out which direction the parabola opens, upward or downward. And that's determined by the a value. That's the leading coefficient, or the number in front of the x squared term. And that's negative three, which is less than zero. So we know the parabola is going to open up downward. If the parabola opens downward, then it's going to have a maximum value. Next thing we want to get is the axis of symmetry. And that is given by the opposite of B over 2A. In this function, the B value is six. So the opposite of B is negative six. 2 times the a value is negative 3. So you would have negative 6 over negative 6, which is 1. So we would put a dotted line or a dashed line vertical right through x equals 1. Now, again, that's not the actual graph of the function. That's just the dividing line. That's the axis of symmetry. So next thing we want to do is get the vertex. The vertex, all you do is plug the value in for x that you got from the axis of symmetry. So plugging in 1, you get negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 plus 4. So that'd be negative 3 plus 6 plus 4. Negative 3 and 6 is 3 plus 4 gives you 7. So that would represent the coordinate 1 comma 7. So you can go way up here and put your vertex. And I know that that's going to be the maximum point on the graph because that's my vertex. I also notice know that the graph is going to open downward from there because the A value is negative. And anytime the A value is negative, then your graph is going to open downward. Next thing we want to do is get the y-intercept. And all you do is plug in zero. The y-intercept always occurs when the x value is zero. So for any function, when you plug in x equals zero, that should give you the y-intercept. So negative three times zero squared plus six times zero plus four. That's just going to end up being four. So that would be the coordinate zero comma four. So we could plug that point onto our graph at 0, 4. And because of the symmetry of quadratic functions, since I'm at a height of 4 and I'm one unit to the left side of the axis of symmetry, I know at that same height to the right side of the axis of symmetry, I'm going to get another point. So I can put another point there. All right. And then that gives me three points. I like to put another point on there. Um, and usually what I do is just go one more point to the left or the right. So I'm going to go uh, to negative one because I already have a point when X is two, when X is one, when X is zero. So I would either plug in negative one or three. I'm just going to do negative one because I want to point some things out to you as well. When you plug in negative one, be careful. Make sure you put it in parentheses because 
the signs are going to easily get confused, particularly if you're using a calculator to figure this out. You have to have the parentheses around the negative one. So that'd be negative three times one. Remember, negative one squared is one. Six times negative one is minus six plus four. So you'd have negative three minus six plus four. So that'd be negative nine plus four, which is negative five. So when x is negative one, you go down here and you have negative five as a point. And now I'm two units to the left of the axis of symmetry. So I could go two units to the right of the axis of symmetry and put, put its point there. Now I have five points and just connect them with a smooth curve like that. Put some arrows on the end. Got a little bend in there, but it just should be a smooth curve. Again, you don't want to connect them as a V or as line segments and make it jagged. You want it to be a smooth curve. All right, guys, that's it for this uh, example. Hope that was helpful to you. Make sure you let me know in the comments below if there's a problem that you'd like me to work through, and maybe I'll make a video about it. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications when new videos are uploaded. All right, take care.